me teach you guys how to factor perfect cubes. Before we do that, we need to set everything equal to zero, just like you know we have been. Um, so we're going to keep our negative 6x cubed plus 5, distribute 2x cubed plus 32. So it is important for us to go ahead and get things set equal to zero. Um, I'm going to move everything to the right because I don't like this negative over here. So I'm going to add 6x cubed, 6x cubed, and I'm going to subtract 5 to get it equal to 0. I like to keep my leading term positive. So that makes 8x cubed plus 27 equal to 0. So um, if you scroll through the notes, you are going to notice that step 1 is set it equal to 0. Decide how many solutions it should have, put it into your calculator, and look at the graph. So I'm going to do that. So I see that it's x cubed, so it should end up having three solutions. I'm going to follow my steps and put it in my calculator. Remember, you have to get it equal to zero first. So clear this out. It was 8x to the third, and was it plus 27 or minus 27? Plus 27. And I'm going to hit graph. Uh, what I notice is that it's going to cross. It appears as if it crosses somewhere right in this area. Um, I wish I could show you better, but right where that blue line crosses the x-axis. Um, so it only crosses one time. So what that tells me is that of my three solutions, one is going to be real and two are going to be imaginary. And now I am going to, so I'll just kind of put dashes by those because those add to three total. Now I'm going to factor. So what you need to be able to see about this type of problem is that it is the sum, S-U-M, because it's an addition sign. And I need you to remember that those are perfect cubes. So you have never factored perfect cubes before. You have factored perfect squares, but never perfect cubes. So let me teach you how that works. It's a small parenthesis and then a longer parenthesis. And remember, all of this is set equal to zero. I take, and I'm going to just kind of on the side write this. I need to take the cube root of 8x cubed because that's my first term. And that goes here because the cube root of 8 is 2 and the cube root of x cubed is x. So I take their cube roots. Oh, I should draw a little cube on there, shouldn't I? I take their cube roots and I put the answer here. Now I take the cube root of 27. Well, the cube root of 27 is 3. That goes there. Now, the rest of the factoring is based off of the 2x and the 3. I square my 2x. I'm going to erase that in a second, but I want you to see what I'm doing. So I get 4x squared, and I square my 3. And I write that back there. So I squared my 2x. I squared my 3. That middle thing right here, it tells me that it's the first two items multiplied together. So if I multiply 2 times 3, I get 6x. And that came from 2 times 3. Now, if you ask me, this is super messy. Um, I would suggest going back and watching me do that again and write down any specific questions you have on how to factor those. I'm going to get rid of that box, too. That's a really messy six, so I'm going to fix that. Now I need to do my signs. My signs are always the exact same as they were at the beginning. So plus, it's same, different, plus. So same as they were, different, and plus. Boy, that still looks really messy, doesn't it, guys? Let's change that to a minus 6x. I'm so sorry with how messy that was. There you go. So I did the cube roots. That's how I got 2 and 3. I squared the 2 and the 3. That's how I got 4 and 9. I multiplied them. 2 times 3 is 6. Then the signs are always, if you look up here, if this is a plus, it's same, different, plus. If it was a minus, it would have been same, different, plus. All right. Now. Each of these items, I'm going to highlight what I mean by each of these items. This and this each get set equal to 0. So 2x plus 3 gets set equal to 0. That's a pretty darn easy one to solve, right? Subtract 3, divide by 2. That's one answer. 
Remember, I have three answers total. So my first answer is negative three halves. And I knew I was, remember on my graph? Remember how it crossed one time? I just found it. That must be at negative three halves or negative 1.5. Now this one is never gonna factor. You can try all day to factor that by grouping or by box. It won't work. You're gonna have to do the quadratic formula. Opposite b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now solve. Let's see, what's that going to be inside of there? It's going to, um, I think I can dual screen on this. Okay, here I go. So I'm going to do square negative 6. I got to square that. Minus 4 times 4 times 9. Negative 108. Getting minimum calculator. All over 8. Now I have to think about what square goes into 108. Um, let's see. Is it going to be 36? Let me try. It is going to be 36. Okay, that's good. Um, I, I would think that will always be whatever this is right here, like negative 6 squared is 36. So it's going to be 36 times 3. So I'm going to keep going with my quadratic formula, which we have. You guys are really proficient in the quadratic formula in Chapter 5. And, and uh, I think in Chapter 8 as well, you did great. So the square root of 36 is 6. Oh, and because it was negative, there's my i. And my square root of 3 is left. So the i is from the negative. The 6 is from the square root of 36. And the 3 is from the leftover, all over 8. And just like in chapter four, we're going to divide by what we can. So this all divides by two. So that's three plus or minus three i square root of three all over four. And those are my two imaginary answers. So that's three plus or minus three i square root of three all over four. So I found all three solutions. One of them was real. Two of them are imaginary which really does match the graph because it only crosses the x-axis one real time.